Hello Pisces, Sun, Moon, Venus, and Mars signs, and welcome to your reading. So I've gone ahead and pulled out some oracle cards and we will clarify with the tarot. I was feeling instructed to ring the singing bowl for you to help clear any blockages in your energy and help you accept the guidance of the reading on a deeper spiritual aspect. So feel free to take some deep cleansing breaths in and out and I will sound the singing bowl. Blessed be. All right, so the energy of the reading at this time from the Sacred Power reading cards. We have Angel Assistance. So I do see this card as the card, the angel, Archangel Metatron, which is said to be like God's right hand man. He is the angel as the angel of above divine intervention ask and you shall receive oh there's different archangels in this um so feel free there's green pink blue red indigo white orange yellow and black so you may want to close your eyes and whatever color you see will correspond to a different angel for everybody and i will read that at the end you have asked the angels for help and they are guiding you. You are now supported by the angelic realm, serving as God's messengers. The angels provide heavenly support, divine wisdom, knowledge and healing to all beings on earth. You are deeply connected to the angelic realm right now and you are ready to receive their assistance. Assisting you on your earthly journey, the archangels have delegated a team of helpers for many areas of your life. The angels share with you messages of divine wisdom knowledge and healing through our thoughts, signs, nature, people, and life synchronicities. The angels act as bridges for energy shifts, soul awakenings, Akashic records, light codes, spiritual knowledge, higher planes, and realms of consciousness. Right now, the archangels have arrived to connect you to divine source. Powerful healing is taking place. You are encouraged to employ healthy eating and lifestyle choices as these will assist in adjusting your unique and divine vibration to align you with your life's purpose. The angels ask you to spend time in meditation, focusing on sacred geometric symbols to enhance your intuition. Connect to the collective consciousness and expand your spiritual awareness. Connecting to the angels in this way provides a bridge to the higher realms. Each color represents an archangel and is charged with a specific role. Focus on this card. Which color are you drawn to? This is your current angel helper. With intention, feel the angel's healing energy wash over you. Thank them and pulse them. Thank them and pulse them your love and gratitude for this service. So this could be like a color bathe therapy. You could clear your color, your aura with any color that you are drawn to or see. So green represents the Archangel Raphael, spiritual, physical, and emotional healing. Pink is Archangel Kamel, relationships, friendships, and love. Blue, Archangel Michael, strength, protection, and will. Red, Archangel Uriel, removes lower energies and thought forms. Indigo, Archangel Zadkiel, Universal magic, intuition, and manifestation. White, Archangel Gabriel, communication, education, and learning. Orange, Archangel Haniel, ac accessing spiritual gifts, intuition, and clairvoyance. Yellow, Archangel Jophiel, 
wisdom and intelligence, black, archangel, Azrael, emotional turmoil, grief, and addictions. I'm feeling Archangel Azrael is the angel of death, if I'm not mistaken. So if there is any sort of death, um, the grief and loss of somebody, he would usually be the angel to assist you through this um, transition. So I'm going to dive into the Ethereal Visions Tarot. to the angels want Pisces, Sun, Moon, Venus, and Mars signs to know. Pisces. So we have the Page of Wands, which could be a call to explore one's passions. The wands mirror your consciousness and give insight into the core of what you are, both internal and external. They urge you to take action in situations that arise in your life. The element is fire, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, and the direction of the self. So this could be connected to your foundation, your life path. The page of wands represents enthusiasm, travel, creativity, and exploration. So you may be called to... Um, embrace a little more enthusiasm. You may be called to travel, create and explore your passions, your desires, what excites you. Next we have, ooh, the Page of Cups. These could be angelic messages as well. I do see the pages as messengers. So we have the Page of Fire and the Page of Water. Um, definitely could be exploring your passions, could offer some emotional healing here. The Page of Cups could be your current energy as well, which is seeing through um, fresh new emotions. The Page of Cups represents confidence, happiness, contentment, and insight. The cups delves into our emotional state and relationships. The suit appears when you need to pay attention to your own intuition when making decisions. Water, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, and the direction of the West. So the West I do see as the energy of the spiritual realm, the setting sun. So you may even be receiving um, messages from your guardian angels in your, most likely in your sleep time, in the nocturnal hours. There could be... Um, Connections that are coming through your emotions as well. Ooh, then we have the King of Wands. So the King of Wands can be um, connected to a fire element. Um, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, I would see this more as probably Leo's energy. But the King of Wands is kind of like mastering one's passions, one's intention, right? We kind of go from the page to the king. There could be, for some of you, something involving, like, I'm almost seeing sisters here and a father. There may even be, like, a father that has passed on that is watching over you and your sisters or sister. That's not, gonna re that's not going to apply for everyone. Keep in mind, this is a general reading, so this is for Pisces, Zodiac in general. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. The King of Wands, influence, respect, leader, and maturity. We do have as the underlying energy, the Ace of Wands. So this is the, um, the element of fire itself, which can be about um, new, new passions coming in, new desires, a new understanding of some sort, inspiration, potential creation, and enthusiasm. Behind that, we have the Four of Pentacles which is a card letting you know that you are safe and protected as you explore these new passions. And then you have the two of wands looking to the, to the future with hope as well as possibly traveling. 
it definitely very well could represent travel for some of you because we do have the chariot card here which is the card of cancer's energy which is basically the chariot the car right moving forward the chariot also speaks of balancing our inner and outer realities so working on the inner realms with your angelic assistance so you may be maybe receiving messages and divination coming through your dreams or meditative states through your clairvoyance that are helping you um well they could be helping everyone on different levels right but this could be helping you um unveil your passions and desires and the direction you would most benefit from moving forward in life so now we're diving into the wildwood tarot The spiritual assistance or confirmation on your journey, we have the Eight of Bows with the Hearth Fire. So the Eight of Bows is the Eight of Wands in the traditional tarot, and this can represent um, forward or fast-moving energy. A hearth fire gives warmth and light in the depth, in the deep midwinter. Warmth of life, love, and friendship are shared generously. There is a sincere desire for celebration, security, and harmony shared with compassion and kindred spirits. This also leads to the attainment of innermost peace and the feelings of personal well-being and achievement. Seer, sincere desire for celebration, security, and harmony, which is interesting because you did have the Ace of Wands, which could represent passions and desire, with the Four of Pentacles, which does actually speak of security, feeling safe and secure within your own environment, perhaps within... Um, Friendship groups, family. Hope leads to the attainment of the innermost dreams, desires, and security. Fueling your soul with belief in yourself, your values, and natural justice. To commune with a close fellowship of friends and family, tested and loyal to a common moral code, belief, or way of life, brings a blessing. A gathering of friends and family around a place of common emotional significance, symbolism, and safety is a powerful experience. It acknowledges the shared consciousness of the human spirit and the bonding experiences that evolve and grow with con comrades and family, whether blood relatives or those that live or those that life has randomly thrown together. We celebrate the fact that we endure, survive and thrive and grow with the support and companionship of our chosen tribe. It is a time to be thankful and to express and receive love. It is also an emotional state of being that says I never. I revere the fire that forged these relationships and give thanks for the love that endures through life. This is reminding me of another card called the family of light, the family of light from a deck I used to have. And I'm trying to remember what the deck was called. The family of light though, basically speaks of whether it is blood relationships or like your chosen adopted family being with people that resonate with you on a deeper level that you feel safe and content with, which is much what the hearth fire is speaking of, right? Being in, being around people that are kind of like-minded, that kind of lifts you up and inspire you. What on earth was that deck called? Let me see if I can Google it here. showing up here. The light work the light worker oracle. So some of you may actually feel called to purchase this deck. This is the deck right here. Oh, and the card itself. I 
I gave that deck away in a in a drawing that I do on Facebook from time to time. I do um, deck giveaways on my Facebook page, which should be, I mean, by the time this reading comes out, the name of the page should be the Oracle of Atlantis. It was previously known as Raven Mystic Oracle. There's just been a slight change as I have lost access to my old Google account. Um, so if you want to follow that page, you um, there are times I do free readings on there as well as deck giveaways. So when I order new decks, eventually I usually do a deck giveaway to clear out some of the old decks and repurpose them and gift them to somebody else so I don't have a crap ton of Oracle decks, right? We also have the Card of Fulfillment with the Three of Bows. So the three, three and eight together adds up to 11. I do see this as a karmic gateway. I'm also seeing 11 right here in the wands. So basically what you put in, you will get back. Nourishment from a spiritual source gives inner security and joy. Goals and desires are reached, making life rich with emotional scrutiny and a sense of completion. The archer must be at one with the bow to fully direct its potential energy. And just as the arrow passes through the bow, propelling it to its target with effortless grace, the questing heart and seeker of knowledge allows the energy to flow through him. This combination of balanced energy and intellectual focus enables the mastery of any situation. And allows the enrichment of success by being both of one with the environment and its inhabitants. Reaching this inner stronghold of strength and peace can only be achieved by constant reappraisal, vig vigilance, and commitment to your goals. But the act of letting the power flow through you and having the trust to allow your arrows to fly completes an unseen universal current. The inner stillness and focus thus produced is easily apparent and observable to others and builds a sense of trust, confidence, and security in those for whom you are responsible. This inner shining energy will inspire others to start out on their own path of discovery and sojourn to fulfillment. A robed figure stands at the junction of two ways, one hand raised in blessing, the other holding a bow. Two bow staves made from freshly cut branches trimmed but still rough hewn stand planted in the earth on either side of the road, forming a gateway through which the figure offers welcome to the approaching traveler. So there's definitely, um, I'm just noticing like the snakes or dragons on her robe do symbolize the balancing of the masculine and feminine, the father and mother energies that reside within all of us. Which is no, well, it's no real surprise, right? You have the page of wands and the page of cups we have fire and water two opposing elements but once united can create a steam which can also it can re represent like steamy connections but i actually see this as more of like um almost like um like a sauna or um oh what is um, like a cleansing ceremony of some sort, releasing the old so that you can obtain fulfillment, balancing one's own energies. By balancing one's own energies, you also help other people balance their own energies, and the cards were speaking of this. So I kind of want to see if we can get any further information about this fulfillment with the pocket version of the Wildwood Tarot. Clarify the energy of fulfillment. What is this fulfillment? So we have the nine of stones and the six of arrows with trend, tradition and transition. So with the nine of stones of tradition and the six of arrows of transition, there may be certain traditions of the family of your upbringing that you may have held on to, and maybe you're coming out of some of these traditions, leaving some of them behind, as they may be hindering your progress. Because the thing with traditions is, yes, it's always, it's um, 
can be beautiful to uphold certain traditions, but the cycles of the earth and everything, they can also prevent us from moving forward in the in a, the best path for us if we are holding on to old outdated traditions. So this may be a call to examine what traditions work for you and what don't. Some traditions maybe should be brought forward in the world, but a lot of traditions need to kind of fall, fall away as we adapt and evolve as a collective too, right? There are certain traditions that just don't work for the collective anymore. The Six of Stones or the Six of Pentacles is all about feeling um, content within oneself. And perhaps by doing this, you've had to walk away from certain energies that don't support or uplift you, that don't bring fulfillment. From the Druid Animal Oracle, your animal spirit guide. We have the horse, which I love because the horse is, the horse is a card of strength, but it is also a card of freedom. Perhaps even freedom from past um, cycles or lessons. This can be the horse is connected to Cancerian energy in the um, Celtic horoscope. I wonder what your zodiac would be in the Celtic. Celtic or scope. Celtic zodiacs. What is little Pisces? Pisces. So, what is Pisces? February to March? The end of February, isn't it? So, February 18th to March 17th, we have the snake. And March 18th to April 14th. So the dates are a little bit different, um, is looks like a fox. Feel free to look that up for yourself if you want. It's the Celtic horoscope or Zodiac. Anyway, the horse in Gaelic terms is each. The goddess, the land, and travel. The card shows a gray mare with the chalk hill figure of the white horse of Uffington, Oxfordshire in the background. In the foreground, we see mares, peas, bog bean, and horsetail growing, and to the left, horseshoe vetch. Carved on one rock is the symbol of a key, and on the other, a mounted warrior. The sun is prominent in the sky. The spirit of each calls us to journey to travel. This may manifest itself as a desire to travel in the physical world, or we may be drawn to voyaging in the inner realms. She brings us energy and speed and connects us to the power of both the land and the sun. The horse goddess is a patroness of the complete life cycle of birth, death, and the afterlife and rebirth. By working with the spirit of each, we will grow to feel comfortable with every aspect of the life cycle knowing that the goddess protects and guides us through each of its stages. We have angel number 122, so I'm getting 22. 22 is a master number, feel free to look it up, but 22 reduced would be a four, which can represent our foundations. It is Cancer's energy, our home environment. So how does your home environment make you feel? Are you feeling stagnant or, stagnant or stuck? Um, if you are, there could be a call just to to cleanse your space. You can do um, like a saging ceremony as well as getting rid of anything that you don't use anymore, kind of clear it out. Um, I actually watched a 
documentary about cats the other day. And what uh, in part of the documentary, it spoke about cats being witches familiars and witches actually clean their house as a sign of releasing of the old, right? So it's clearing out the old energy so that could help. Otherwise, if you do all this kind of stuff and you're still feeling kind of stuck or stagnant in your home environment, maybe this is a call for relocation, travel and moving. The energy will be different for everyone, obviously. So the tradition of the horse, one horse was lithe and swift leaping, high arched and powerful, long bodied and with great hooves. The other flowing maned and shining, slight and slender in hoof and heel, from the cattle raid of Cooley. These two horses drew the chariot of Ulster, Hero Ku Chulain. Their names were Gracie and Black Seagull. Reminding me very much of the chariot card here. Oh, look at that. We even have the gray horse and the white horse, right? So, this is kind of like your physical body and your inner realms. Gracie was clairvoyant, and when she foresaw her master's death, she wept tears of blood. Cooch Elaine rode into battle on a wood and wicker chariot, as many Irish and British warriors did long after chariot warfare had been abandoned elsewhere. The Celtic custom of headhunting in battle, fastening the en enemies' se severed heads to their horses' necks, must have made them terrifying opponents. In pre-Roman Gaul and Britain, the horses were small and pony-like. They were used for halage and hunting as well as battle. In Gaul, they were also a source of food. Like sheep and cattle, they were symbols of wealth, and the frequency of horse interments in ritual pits and chariot burials points to their significance in Celtic life. Sometimes dogs and horses were buried together, which suggests a cult practice related to hunting, and at times horse gear or simply parts of the horse, such, such as its teeth, are present as burial offerings. Horse bones have been discovered in the foundations of houses, undoubtedly to bring good luck. And the association of the horse with luck continues to this day, with the belief in the horse's shoes ability to attract good fortune. We have one, two, three. So this is like um, slow and steady progress. Since the horse is sacred and brings good fortune, it has to be protected from the evil eye with the horse's brasses. The druids and later country folk would bless a horse by leading it sunwise three times around a Karen, which would be known as Karen Nan Each. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing any of these terms right. <laughs> Just FYI, I am aware. <laughs> to protect a horse from theft by witches, carters would hang hag stones, naturally hold flint stones around their horses' necks. The witches might then resort to throwing a magic bridle over a sleeping human, turning them into a horse for the night. The horse goddesses. Epona from whom is derived the word pony, originated in Gaul, but she was so popular that her cult spread to Britain and as far as east as Bulgaria, and she became the only Celtic deity to be worshipped in Rome. With a feast day of December 18th in Welsh tradition, her, her equivalent is Rhiannon, and in Ireland, the goddess Maca and Etain. I'm kind of going to skip over that part. I'm being drawn to the gateways of birth and death. Which is one, two, four, which reduced would be a seven, which is the house of Libra. So this is our emotional, um, our emotional relationships. In the Druid tradition, the time of Beltane, of mating, in May symbolizes the gateway for the soul to enter the world, and the time of Samhain, of death, at the other side of the year in November, symbolizes the gateway for the soul to leave the world. So I see this as West, the energy of death, right? These two gateways act as fundamental points in the life cycle. 
The horse goddess opens the gates of life at Beltane, allowing in a great flood of ebullient energy, which makes men feel like stallions and makes women refer to them as studs. As the gates are closed at Samhain, she carries the soul to the afterlife, back to the summerlands to be renewed again. The association of the horse goddess with the life cycle of birth, death, afterlife, and rebirth is confirmed when we would s discover the ritual hobby horses are ridden either at Samhain or Beltane. So Samhain, I believe, is fall and Beltane is spring, if I'm not mistaken. The Padstow and Minehead hobby horses bring in the May, while the Hodden horse of Kent, the wild horses of Cheshire, and Shrops Shropshire and Mary Lwyd of Wales usher in the winter. Being associated with the life cycle and hence sexuality, the horse represents not only human fertility, but the power and fertility of the land itself. In Ireland, certain kings undertook a symbolic marriage to a white mare to ally their own sovereignty with the power of the land. And as it is to reinforce our awareness of the horse's connection with the earth, great images of the horse were carved on the chalk hillside of Britain. Which is this little figure right here. As well as symbolizing the power of the land, the horse also had a close affinity with the sun as a solar animal. It was depicted pulling the sun's chariot across the sky, making it not only sacred to the goddess, but also to the sun and sky god. It's giving me very much um, Helios energy. So Helios is the god of the sun, which ironically is my cat. Uh, it's actually not ironic at all, but uh, whether allied with God or goddess, the horse provides us with the power and the ability to journey in this world or the next. And with shoes and horse and with shoes, the horse can ride even faster and further. Horse shoeing was first developed in the Celtic world and the smith was considered an important figure. Under old Welsh law, it was he who took the first drink at any feast. And in Ireland, the smith god, Goib Hinu was host at a feast which rendered his guest immortal. By taking us to High Breezel and back, the horse does indeed provide us with the means to transcend the limitations of mortality. And we have one, two, five, which reduce would be an eight, which was Scorpio's energy of life, death, and rebirth and the cycles of creation. So there's almost this call if you have, for those of you that may have lost somebody recently or are going through a grieving um, stage, there's the cycles of life, death, and rebirth, the cycles of reincarnation, right? So even though um, a body may be gone, the soul still lives on. And there's maybe just some of, some of us need to be reminded of that. Now, I wanted to look into the wild mystic to the secrets of, of your energy Pisces. And I will get there, but first I'm being called to pull from the Raven Song Oracle. So this is the deck I have created. Um... If you wish to purchase it, I will have the link in the description box. I just want to show you this quick. We do have the energy of feathers and coins. So if you find random, random feathers and coins on your path, this can be a sign that your angels or passed on loved ones are with you, letting you know that they are still kind of around energetically. You may not be able to always see them, but they are there. And I do believe you can connect to any... Um, passed on loved one by taking a few deep breaths, calming the mind and speaking to them within your mind here. So if you are missing somebody or thinking about them and you find feathers and coins on your path, that is like a, a physical confirmation that they are with you. You're not alone. They are still there. So what is the advice of the horse? We have the heart and soul. The light within is where magic begins. Can you feel the shine of beauty's divine? To seek is to ask and listen upon close, behind the eyes of your physical post. 
Your heart and soul is where your true energy resides, for your soul knows its purpose hidden deep inside. Take time to connect with your heart through moments of stillness and meditation. What guidance does it have for you? Affirm, I trust that my inner voice will always guide me correctly. And then the underlying energy of the heart and soul card, we have the root chakra. Which I could see the root chakra is said to be red in color. So I could, the lower root, the lower chakras, it starts with the root chakra, the sacral chakra, and the solar plexus chakra are all connected to your roots where you came from, as well as um, your divine feminine, the sacral chakra could be your sexual energy, as well as the womb of creation where we are all birthed. And then the solar plexus chakra I would see as the internal sun. So it is the like the masculine energy, but we have the root chakra coming out. So there may be a call to clear and heal the root chakra. Release the blood of poison from the past, giving new life to roots growing fast. The shedding of old to awaken within. True divine destiny and faith begin. You may like to work with your roots, family, any resentment that may reside within. Working with the root chakra can help balance out involuntary responses. A call to help you release the poisons of the past and bring in fresh life. Loving from within. Hashtag the root chakra. So I almost kind of see this as with the underlying energy, we do have the energy of fire. So you may even want to, in meditation, imagine clearing the root chakra with um, sacred fire. But this can change our processes and beliefs from a deeper and higher understanding within. And then you have this eight of wands to move like stuck energy. So the root chakra is connected to our survival instincts, our like our money, our fight or flight response could be the involuntary responses. So the root chakra is, it's kind of like a sponge, right? They say, as we grow, the first seven to eight years of our childhood are the most informative. So whatever happened within those first seven to eight years kind of end up dictating your whole life. So if you were raised in a family that was like imbalanced, your energy could be imbalanced. So you want to clear and work with this energy to strengthen your internal root chakra to give you the um, most balanced, healed energy. So you're kind of shifting the energetic vibrations from fight or flight response and survival mode into more of the energy of actually thriving, healing the roots from within. So the, um, the mystery or the wild mystic energy attached to you at this time from the wild mystic oracle, and it's funny that it's represented by a snake, right? Because part of the um, Pisces season is represented by the snake. And the thing with snakes is they work on vibration, right? They work on energetic pulses. And wasn't it? No, it was the end the angel assistance, sending your gratitude through pulses through your body. So snakes run on um, pulses. They can tend to pick up energies and remove them. And as well, they shed their skin, right? So this could be almost like one thing you can imagine doing in a meditation is growing a, a white light from within you and filling your entire body with it and pushing out any old stuck or negative energy to like the surface of your skin. And then in meditation, you can actually imagine shedding your skin like a snake would, pulling off that old. And then what I would do with that skin in the meditation is actually take it and throw it in a fire to burn and release it. So your the um, hidden mystic energy within Pisces at this time, we have the secret of the raven. This card represents hidden secrets, the gathering of knowledge and spreading of rumors. 
As the ravens, Huggin and Munnin, reported their findings to the Norse god Odin, the raven card urges you to discover the truth behind hidden secrets. It may warn of a secret about to be revealed, for better or for worse. So Huggin and Munnin, the two ravens of Odin, actually represent thought and memory. So there may be certain memories or flashes or insights that actually come through your thoughts and memories. And when you acknowledge these, then you can work to forgive and release them to heal the energy from within. This card may be preparing us for difficult realization or exposed trauma. So with this, this can be very shadow energy, especially if you have gone through trauma previous to this um, reading, or even now, there could be a deeper connection to it and a deeper understanding. But once you face this energy, you can find a resolution within to release it. But trauma is, I mean, it was a traumatic event, so it's not going to be something pleasant to remember. But if you can remember that you're working through this energy to heal and let go, eventually by going through it, much like the stages of grief, right? Eventually there will be acceptance of it and a true release and you will actually be better for it. Just as Huggin and Munnin represented reflection and memory, the Raven card may also be urging us to confront a secret of our own and question why we are hiding this part of our life from others. It does not judge, but merely presents us with what it sees. Be prepared to look at the secrets shown to you with compassion and understanding to gain wisdom from what they have to teach you about others and yourself. So normally I would read the shadow energy if the card was reversed and it's not reversed, but I do feel called because we have very, this is actually looking at it. I'm seeing very Pisces energy and Pisces is all about our dreams and fantasies which can be deeply connected to the subconscious mind. So your inner reality affects your outer reality. So I'm almost seeing the two koi fish, right? Which is Pisces um, symbolism. So the shadow energy, hurtful gossip, misinformation and scandal may be plaguing you. Sometimes the truth is not something you wish to hear. And sometimes others' truths are not necessarily the same as your own. You cannot control how other people think about you, but you can control your reactions. Assess your own truth and stay strong. The element is air. Florals, daisy, holly, black-eyed Susan, elm, oak, and slippery elm. The stones for working with this energy. Onyx, obsidian, celestite, lapis lazuli. So those could be good stones um, to work with through going through this energy. Um, ravens are, they are tricky energy to work with, but they actually work through your energy centers to help clear out this energy. They are a bird of healing, especially in Celtic lore. Quell rumor or misinformation, past life work, gaining secret wisdom, or accessing ancient mystery. And the secret of the raven from the seeker oracle, the card that wanted to come out, we have the... Drachvin, which is very interesting. Know your labels. <laughs> I didn't even realize these, this card connection. So the Drachvin is a combination bef between a raven and a dragon. Some of you may be dragons in the Chinese zodiac. I am a dragon in the Chinese, a horse in the Celtic. Humans are multifaceted beings. We have more facets to our nature and personality than the drachfin has scales and feathers. Um, this is also reminding me of uh, Quetzal Quetzalcoatl. I think it's Quetzal. Quet uh, what was Quet Quetzalcoatl? <laughs> Uh, known for. Quetzalcoatl is a, um, a Mayan deity. In Aztec times, 14th and 16th century, Quetzalcoatl was revered as the patron of priests, the inventor of the calendar of books, and the protector of goldsmiths and other craftsmen. He was also identified with the planet Venus. He 
He is shown sometimes as a serpent and sometimes as a dark man with a red beak. He has the god. He was the god of learning, education, and the priesthood. Quetzalcoatl was sometimes seen as a symbol of death, death, and was said to have invented the calendar and books. Um, so the reason why I find that interesting is because Quetzalcoatl basically is a snake with wings, or that could also be a dragon, right? So I'm almost getting this evolution of one soul journey, right? Because we have the snake, which is a reptile. And then if you add legs to it, it would become a lizard and a dragon would be an evolved form of a lizard, right? I'm almost getting this energy of like the snake could represent like eternal damnation. Because I did read somewhere, it might have even just been a meme on Facebook about how God punished the snake so he or the lizard or dragon or whatever so he removed his legs. So now the the snake has no legs, right? It is constantly connected to the earth. It cannot really lift its body off the earth unless it's climbing something, but even then its body is attached to whatever it's climbing. So with this, it's almost like picking up the history of Earth itself, perhaps even one's own um, past lives. But then eventually it grows wings and legs and it's, it starts to evolve through the cycles and patterns of the past. So this could be very much what you're doing at this time. And, um, but you are being told that you do have angelic assistance. There are teachers and guides supporting you on raising your vibration and healing the roots of the past and opening the heart. Drachvin is a divine messenger, while others see him as demonic, as a demonic being. Who can say that either label is accurate? Nobody but the Drachvin himself knows for certain. The Draken says that some of his labels are he, him, dragon, shimmera, hair, hair, binger, hair, binger, messenger, guide, celestial, magical, divine, ancient, creative, innovative, critical, impatient, noisy, stubborn, gregarious, insistent, persistent, demanding, devious, manipulative, cunning, and absent-minded. And the list is incomplete. Forever tra changing, Drakvin is more than the labels he has offered. And if you have noticed, some of the labels he embraces are negative. Drakvin chooses to be truthful about his nature, for the Drakvin is also whole, authentic, and honest. He explores his nature. He knows his strengths and his weaknesses. He accepts that he has a shadow side, that he is a little bit naughty and not always nice. He also knows that he's predominantly kind and gentle. Drakvin knows his labels, and that makes him powerful. He knows who he is, and because he knows who he is, his feathers do not get ruffled when others try to define or limit him. He understands that there are times when the labels others use to define him are accurate, but also that they are not all he is. By knowing his labels, Drakvin knows he will never be what others expect him to be. He will always be more. Do you know your labels? kind of funny um a while ago um I don't remember how it came up but I used to have this I think I still have it somewhere this um dream dream book so if certain things that you see in dreams what they're supposed to represent and the dragon is in one of one of the descriptions and it basically said never trust a dragon for they are heartless And I just kind of laughed at it. I thought that was hilarious. That's kind of interesting that his heart is even like kind of highlighted here. I don't know why. Well, I brought that up because I mean, people place labels upon us all the time, and sometimes they they can be true, but sometimes um, I like for me personally over my journey, I have taken things very personally, 
Um, but then once we start to accept these labels to a certain degree, we understand that maybe that is part of our energy, but that is not all of our energy either, right? So you don't have to like drown in the opinions and beliefs of what other people call us because they're only seeing certain aspects of oneself. It's not the whole story. Nobody can know your whole story of who and what you are. There may be a call to explain yourself a little bit to clear up any miscommunications, um, especially with the shadow energy of the raven. Because there's, I mean, I'll be the first one to admit there's some, there's some things that I've done that I'm not necessarily proud of on my journey. But when I look back, there's also a lot of worse things I could do, right? There are worse things I could do than go with a boy or two. That's Rizzo from Greece. <laughs> Um, but there is, there's always worse things we can do. A lot of us, I think we like for me, myself, I hold myself really accountable and really responsible for everything I do. And then sometimes I end up doing the same thing. And eventually it's like, kind of like you need to almost embrace the shadow energy as well, because that is kind of the energy of nature itself. There's always like, like animals. I love animals. And then when you watch nature shows, they're beautiful to watch. The only thing is on animal shows, there's so much like killing and hunting and, like that part I don't necessarily like, but they, they do need to eat to survive, right? And the one thing like you think like for cats, for example, like jungle cats, big cats, you would think that they have one of the easiest lives out there. They don't. They have probably the worst lives out there for it's always a struggle for them to survive because even though they are an apex predator, there's a lot of other um, entities that can take them down. Like, Lions and hyenas, right? A lion can only outbeat the hyenas if there are multiple lions. If there aren't multiple lions, that lion is screwed. But it's like this, this constant fight and struggle to survive for the cat, which you wouldn't maybe necessarily consider because you think a cat is a it's a formidable opponent. It is a predator. But it's not always easy for them to take down prey to survive. So let's take a look at the future outcome for you Pisces. And then we will close the reading off with some closing messages. Jeez. Okay. Well, we have the world. So definitely could be travel, breaking through cycles with the Knight of Wands, passion and forward moving energy. And then we have the Ten of Cups. Um, the Ten of Cups usually does represent a wish fulfillment. The Ten of Cups can represent home and family life. However, behind it, there is the Five of Cups. So there definitely could be the loss of a loved one here. But um, that was just the split of the deck. So let's see what actually wants to come out. Future energy. So we have the Nine of Swords. So the Nine of Swords can be a card of anxiety and panic attacks, nightmares. As you can see, like... You have in the background, it's almost like these ghost spirits or ancestors like laughing at her. So um, you may even feel like people will laugh and mock it, mock you for certain truths that need to be expressed for your insecurities. But then we have the Queen of Pentacles. So the Queen of Pentacles is very grounded, stable, and balanced in her energies. I see the pentacle as like the five elements, right? You have your fire, air, water, earth, and spirit is the representation of the pentacle. But fire is like your passion, your, your rage, your anger. And then you have air is more your thought, your mental space. Water is like your deeper emotions, your, your intuition and healing. And earth can be like your physical body. And then spirit is like your soul and willingness to, 
to conquer through all of this type of energy. So by working with this mental subconscious energy, it might be scary, it may be hard, but you're actually bringing yourself into a greater balance here. And then you have the Ace of Swords, which represents greater truth, clarity, and understanding. You will see things from a different perspective by doing this energy work for yourself. And people, I mean, if people laugh at you, who gives, I mean, who gives a shit? I mean, it's easy to say that, but I mean, it's hard. We do have the underlying energy of the Seven of Wands. So this can be a defensive energy, but this could also be a card to defend oneself, to honor your truth. Um, because there's a lot of the mystic or spiritual world that some people just won't understand until they're on the path themselves. It may sound crazy and like a bunch of crazy juju, but it actually does have huge significance to your evolution as well as the evolution of the people around you. And the more you kind of work with it in your own way, taking the advice given to you, adapting it, and evolving through your own processes, the more this energy will start to clear out and you'll see things down the road from past situations that you're kind of like, oh, okay, that makes more sense, right? You'll start to find the keys to these locks and things will just start unclicking and starting to make sense. For me, like there was stuff that happened like five, six years ago all these messages were coming through other people and spirit. And over the last few years, they still continue to come through. Um, one thing was I did have the Raven as a spirit guide and the Raven can be a really tricky bird to work with because it, it's, it can speak in riddles and it confuses you. And I felt this energy all the time. It felt like everyone was mocking me, but the more I started just speaking my truth and being honest with certain people, the more the Raven's voice became clearer. It, it, it stopped being like underlying energies or hidden messages or innuendo and started being like the Raven energy started speaking what it meant instead of all this like confusion and trickery, right? Which that's exactly what the Raven's known for. But it's also like building this relationship with yourself and those that you care for around you and being honest through that energetic vibrations. And the more honest you are, the more honest the, the communication comes back to you and you start to understand from a more balanced type of energy. So let's get the closing message with the language of the flowers. Actually, no, I don't want to get it from there. Let's get it from the Avalon magic. So with this, there's weird things. So I will let you in on a secret here. So the closing messages, I usually do them with these two decks just because they're, they're short and sweet. Um, and offer really good advice. Because I always like to end my readings on a good note. Um, I guess maybe I should probably work on breaking that cycle. I got, like, I almost look at it like, um, like a Ouija board, right? They say with a Ouija board, you're always supposed to say goodbye. So you don't leave the energetic connection open. So I always like to pull a closing message to close out the cycle of the energy of this reading. So you take what you need, but it doesn't linger in my energy. Oh, look at that, a white horse, a unicorn. Oh, what I was going to say, I was going to pull the closing message with the language of the flowers, but I got kind of like a, a pain in the side of my in the side of my stomach. So that's what guided me to this. So you may get sensations like that where you go to do something and you feel like an odd sensation in your body. And then if you kind of question yourself and go like 
in your head if you're thinking of doing something and you get like a pain and then you can't say, okay, well, maybe I'll do this instead. And the pain kind of eases, probably better to go with less pain. Make peace with the wildness within you and all of Mother Earth's creations. So that is very foretelling. Like I was talking about, um, like the animal kingdom, right? How animals are very beautiful, especially like for me, anything that's like mm, more, f I'm, I'm more about fur and feathers, right? Like cats, dogs, wolves, birds. Those are usually the animals that I gravitate towards. Um, but they all have their, their beauty, right? Stinks, like, aren't one of my favorite. Well, reptiles in general aren't really one of my favorite creatures. However, the snake is very, very helpful and very beneficial when it comes to healing our energies and our subconscious. So there is actually a respect for it. There's a deeper understanding, right? It's also like dragons. Dragons are... I would say a reptile. They are massive, usually depicted as massive beings, but they're also said to be like the ethereal protectors of the world and the galaxies themselves. So there's also a respect there. But this is also a call to honor the shadow energies within. So the shadow energies could be anything that you fear that anybody else will judge you for. So this is a need and honor to love oneself. Can I get one more closing message for Pisces? Sun, Moon, Venus, and Mars signs. I had to do this myself. Um, one time I was um, with somebody in a hotel room and I was doing drugs and being my freaky sexual self. And there was one point I ended up like beating myself up, scratching myself, and having this weird... I don't know what, how to explain it. All this shit poison just came bursting out and all these weird riddles going, that's kind of interesting going back to that Raven energy, right? Speaking in tongues, all this crap was coming out. I was actually speaking, I don't know if you would call it tongues. I was actually speaking in poetry. Everything came out as a poem in this weird, and the guy I was with would just like kept leaving the room and leaving me by myself. And then when I kind of calmed down, I started explaining what I was talking about and everything I was saying, he was like, oh my God, it made, it, that totally makes sense now that you actually explained what the hell you were talking about. Because the way I was speaking it in poems and riddles, it was all just coming out as this weird chaotic energy. And then once I finally told him, this is where this is coming from. This is where this is coming from. This is where this is coming from. He was like, oh, okay. But there was one point that I had to embrace my dark side which was, I was in the bathroom after beating my sh the shit out of myself. I took a bath and I was all sore from causing myself physical pain. And I looked in the mirror, just looked horrible and beat to shit. When I just said, you know what? Fuck it. I don't really care anymore. I love you. Light and shadow body. And that's when an angel came into the room and the two of cups showed up on the headboard and soulmate energy kind of awakened. And it was just this really beautiful releasing of old energies. But you have to claim both sides of yourself, your light and shadow body. Which is like the dualistic nature of, I mean, people themselves, but especially the animal kingdom, right? Going back to that, oh, they're so cute and cuddly and they'll also fucking tear your face off. But animals don't really do that. Like they do that in the wild for survival and for food. But if we honor and treat the animal with, with respect, it usually reverberates that respect right back to us. So it's kind of what you like almost need to do with the energies within yourself to bring fulfillment, to release any fears, insecurities, traumas of the past. Almost to embrace it for what it was and work through the energy. So the last card, we have this owl of wisdom here. I always see there's like the cycles of life. There's cycles being broken all over the place here though. reminding me of 
I mean, this cycles Atlantean energy. But I actually saw something online the other day about the, what do they call it, bullet glass or something. And I, I want to say it was like in Ireland or England or something like that, where they used to make the windows from blown glass and the last piece looked like that. So in shops, I want to say it's like in Welsh or Ireland or somewhere like that, they sometimes will have that piece in the window pane. And it was supposed to like ward off almost like the evil eye or people from intrusing because it kind of blurs the energy. So it's almost like this energy of like you may feel watched. But certain things are your your journey alone. We do have this stagger buck in the background. So I always kind of get like this masculine, almost like father energy or just masculine energy in general watching over us and protecting us as we search through this wisdom, as we gain greater knowledge. Never be afraid to voice your truth as truth comes from a deep place within your soul. So it's very interesting that that's coming through, especially with these fears and insecurities, right? A lot of times we don't voice our fears and insecurities because we feel foolish or maybe we feel that people use them against us. But if we don't um, speak these fears and insecurities, <clears throat> at least to somebody, I mean, somebody that you trust, right? Somebody that you feel comfortable. If we don't speak them, they continue to haunt us. So by speaking such things, you actually give it less power. So that is the reading I have for you at this time. I hope it resonates. If it does, please feel free to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Many blessings. Live, love, and light. Take care. Oh, also I wanted to mention, I am doing um, Oracle of the Day, I believe it's called. Oracle of the Day. So they're shorts on YouTube. So they're just short, under a minute um, readings. And then I've put them in a playlist. So the playlist is called, I think it's Card of Advice. So if you ever have questions or insecurities or doubts or just need some confirmation or advice on your journey, please feel free to go to that playlist, Card of Advice. And what I would do is you can ask for um, the heavens, angels, the divine to reveal to you what you need to know, or you can ask a specific question and then hit shuffle and allow the first video to play and see what knowledge it has for you. Now, keep in mind, they are oracles. So there, there may not, there's most likely, well, there's not going to be like necessarily like a yes or no answer from it. It's going to be um, kind of like a Bible verse, right? You read it and it'll somehow connect or throughout your day, there may be some synchronistic event that connects you to the reading and you'll, you'll kind of have like an inner knowing by trusting the guidance that comes through on the, on the right advice or path to take. So just wanted to mention that. Anyway, live, love, and light. Many blessings. Mm -hmm.